It's Medical Alert Dog Monday, where we answer your questions about medical alert dog training. This week's socialization item is toys that move on their own. Uh, I just showed this thing to my puppies a couple <laughs> minutes ago and they totally were like, oh, what is that? I don't understand. And then they wanted to play with it. So that's the kind of response that you want from something that does this. There are a bunch of these types of toys in the current toy market. So it's really important that you get your dog used to something that looks and acts uh, and behaves strangely like this toy does. Good luck. So our first medical alert dog Monday question comes from Chip from Washington State. He is a diabetic and he asks, I've paid my down payment for a golden doodle puppy. I've been debating on whether or not to get a male or a female and I'm leaning towards female. However, a friend told me that while males calm down and they don't try to escape houses after being fixed, the same isn't always true of females. Can you please help me out? Thanks, Chip. So Chip, this is a really great question uh, and it's actually bound to stir up some controversy in the service dog community when I answer it. So uh, as many of you know, uh, I actually have uh, had two male service dogs. My first one was Jasper. I got him at eight years of age to be my service dog. My second one is Liam, the one you've probably seen me with a lot in my videos. Uh, he is now seven years old. My third one will also be a male. <laughs> He is one years old right now, his name is Luke, and he's being trained to be my medical alert dog uh, because Liam is just turned seven and he's having some hip and elbow dysplasia issues. So it'll be time to retire him in about a year and a half to two years. So I want a dog that will be able to quickly uh, go in his place when needed. So seeing that I have three males now that are going to be my service dog you would think that I have a preference for males but that actually is not true so there are actually disadvantages and advantages to both genders uh, the advantages to having a female candidate are they are physically smaller than males which can make them great for travel especially if you ride on airplanes so a 45 pound dog is gonna fit much better on an airplane than is your you know, 65 pound Labrador Retriever. Uh, females have a tendency to mature faster than males, so they can easily go into service a little bit earlier, sometimes even up to you know, four to five months earlier than a uh, male dog can. Uh, most females don't lift their legs <laughs> when they pee, and that can be kind of embarrassing for a lot of people. So. You know, kind of nice that they don't do that. Uh, they're physically smaller, which makes them cheaper in the long run. So that means they eat less food than a larger dog or a larger male would, that they're gonna require less uh, anesthesia, which is sometimes by pound um, in the, you know, in the veterinary office. Same thing goes for x-rays. That, that can be by the size of the dog. And then also flea medication too. So that can sometimes mean a $20 difference between a 45 pound dog versus a, you know, 75 pound dog. So, and then again, they eat a lot less than a 45 pound dog is gonna eat a lot less food than a 65 pound dog is. And uh, some disadvantages though of having a female is that uh, both spayed and non-spayed females have a tendency to attract a lot of male suitor attention. <laughs> and uh, the thing about females is like, they're, also, they're smaller, so they are harder to do bracing work with. So. As a person with diabetes, you may not think that you might need a dog to brace off of, a, but uh, in all honesty, there may be a time period in which your blood sugar goes low, your head is spinning, you're on the ground, you can't get up. You may need a dog to help you brace to get up off the ground. So it's kind of nice to have a dog that's able to handle a brace. So if your dog's 45 pounds and you're 175 or 200 pounds, I wouldn't recommend using a dog that small for bracing work. Uh, the other thing too is that uh, intact females, the thing is, is that they have to remove from service at least twice a year for their cycles. So that can be a real disadvantage to someone who needs a dog 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Their advantages to having male, again, they're physically larger, which means that they're great for bracing work, number one. Number two, uh, they're great for like mobility, so like pulling wheelchairs. And then also, like if you're an asthmatic or you have COPD or emphysema, they're great for like carrying oxygen tanks and stuff like that. So they can actually physically carry more than a smaller dog can. The other thing is that they 
uh, don't have you know heat cycles so basically they're not going to have to be taken out of work at any point in time the disadvantages are again they mark territory <laughs> unlike females both male neutered and male unneutered uh, dogs have a tendency to mark so just because you're going to get your dog taken care of doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stop marking behavior uh, they get a little bit distracted around females and heat or coming close to heat and season so uh, that is a big problem and then on the whole again they cost more than females just like we talked about in the previous thing about females costing less than males so why have I chosen to partner myself with a male service dog three times in a row here versus a female if I can see that there are a lot of advantages to having a female the reason why is that my decision is never based on whether the dog is male or female it's based on the dog's temperament and personality and I've just been incredibly lucky to encounter three very sociable uh, very smart food made motivated non-dominant um, fearless males without a lick of aggression or anxiety. So it's really uh, something that I've been lucky to encounter. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are gonna encounter that because you pick a male dog, but that's what I have encountered so far. These characteristics like personality and temperament are much more important to me than uh, the dog's gender. So I suggest that you make the same choice, that you do not base your choice based on gender. You make your choice based on the dog's temperament and the dog's personality. So how do you feel about that decision? Uh, do you think I'm making the right choice by choosing neither gender and basing my decision based on the temperament and the personality of the dog? Uh, if so, leave a comment below. If not, leave a comment below. I wanna hear your comments about this. If you have a question about purchasing or training a medical alert dog, you can email us at questions at servicedogacademy.com and we will try to answer them in our next Medical Alert Dog Monday YouTube video. Please be sure to share this video with your friends on YouTube and on Facebook and uh, all the other social media platforms as well as please feel free to email this video to anyone who you think might be suitable for it. Please be sure also to subscribe to our email list down at the very bottom of our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I have a medical or dog training class coming up in January of 2015 and another one in April of 2015. The January one is here in Seattle and the April one is actually going to be in Iowa, crazy enough. So the thing is, uh, I know that you're probably maybe looking at these videos two to three years later. That's January of 2015 and April of 2015. If you want us to come to your town, please email me. And if you have at least six students, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, if you want information about our classes, please go to our website at servicedogacademy.com or diabeticalalertdoguniversity.com and uh, request information or take a look at our website. There's a ton of information on the classes there. If you want to attend the classes that we've just talked about, please contact us as soon as possible because unfortunately what has happened is uh, this, you know, this company has become a little bit popular in the media and with a lot of diabetic or dog students and that means that our classes sometimes sell out within 36 hours of posting them on our email list. So if you want to be in the class, email us ASAP. So I just want to remind you that you are capable of training your own medical alert dog. All it takes is time, patience, the right candidate, and then working with a person that has some serious experience in this medical alert dog training field. Don't go with a newbie. <laughs> go with someone like me who has, we have at least 100 dogs under our belt now. That Those are dogs that are trained for both uh, diabetes, we've got dogs who are trained for migraine alert, and we've got trains, dogs who are trained for narcolepsy alert. So you can do this. It just takes working with the right person and working with the right dog and a ton of time and a ton of patience. And you can have your own medical alert dog. Good luck. We'll see you next week on Medical Alert Dog Monday. Bye-bye.